You're so beautiful. Hi, everyone. You're beautiful. It's Infinity with Fallon. Beautiful Fallon. Aww. Thank you. I just woke up, so <laughs> I appreciate that. I didn't do anything. <laughs> That's what you look like when you wake up. You're the man that you're with is blessed. And well, anyway, the whole world is blessed. Thank I you. love you so much, sister. <laughs> so um, I want to announce to everyone now. Um, Every Wednesday at 11 o'clock, we'll be Fallon and I talking, catching up, and we'll have more information about our workshop that we're going to be doing. And congratulations right now. We're celebrating. You got your own salon. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm so excited. It's on Madison Avenue and 33rd in Manhattan. Wow. So I'm very, very excited. And if anyone yeah. wants to book, um, my Instagram, Fallon Fitzpatrick. Uh, you, it's one word. You just click the link in the bio and you can book there. So if anyone wants a, a makeover, inner and outer, or one or the other. <laughs> Let's share that link on here. Okay, um, perfect. You can share it in the comments if you want now. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah, so exciting. Oh, my God, I can't wait to visit your salon. and Thank you. Location. When are you actually opening now? August 2nd. Wow. That's so great. How exciting. Thank you. Yeah, I'm very excited. It's actually a wellness and uh, beauty studio. So um, there's like 40 businesses in this place. It's called The Parlor. And then uh, my salon I'm sharing with one of my old coworkers is called The Hair Collective. And um, if you go to the, if you go to the Parlor's website, it's, it's really cool because we both do like spiritual work and coaching. So like it incorporates like a holistic hair kind of um, vibe with other services. Well. Your place, well. I'm very excited. <laughs> well, wow, that's amazing because well, hair stylists are like your therapist, but mm -hmm. with all your modalities, how exciting is that? Yeah, super exciting. And then there's also like um, acupuncture, fitness studio, full body cryotherapy chamber, acupressure, all in the building. So it's a one stop shop for those who want to just get everything done at once. And um, it's also nice because it's small spaces with like plastic dividers and stuff during COVID. So it's like very safe. So I'm excited. I was going to ask, how's, how's the COVID going on in New York? Because so here, I mean, we're doing better than most areas. I think it's just because we had it really bad at first. Um, so, you know, ours, like, I think the other day, the, the lowest uh, daily rate ever um, since, like, March 17th. Um, but everyone here is wearing a mask, socially distancing, being really careful. Like, at the salons, we alcohol uh, everything down in between the sinks, the stations, the chairs, the handles, the everything. Put everything into the sterilizer. We have to wear a face shield and a mask. Um, so it's, like, really... We're like really careful, so I think like that helps. Um, how is it? I heard it's terrible in Florida right now. <laughs> yeah, our numbers are going up and the deaths are going down. Um, I I get the feeling that the virus is um, not as strong as it was with the deaths going down. Like mm -hmm. I it's. I don't know though. I'm so. I, I don't know. I, I feel like I actually had it in the beginning when the testing mm -hmm. was proper. Mm -hmm. But now that Florida's testing, like, I guess we're blowing New York out of the water. Yeah. <laughs> with our numbers. Yeah. I know, so, like, um, the area that my dad lives in, he said that a lot of people think it's a conspiracy um, and it's not a real thing. In Jacksonville? Jacksonville? Jacksonville. Oh, yeah. And he said that, um, you know, a lot, nobody's social distancing or wearing masks in his neighborhood and they think it's a conspiracy and it's actually, they think it's political and stuff. So yeah. um, that kind of stuff scares me, you know, just because like my client that I was really close to died. So I actually know people that died of COVID and it's really sad, you know? Yeah. So it, I don't know. There's a lot of conspiracies that go into my It is killing people. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a form of the flu. It's one of the, you know, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Anyway, we don't want to talk about that. <laughs> I can't wait for that to be over, though. Yeah. Like, our other country. <laughs> Enough <laughs> COVID talk. Yeah, I think the lesson is, uh, what I'm taking from it is, you know, people can use it, see it as an opportunity, even though it's terrible. Like, 
an opportunity to take the time that you don't have time, you know, for maybe, um, you know, introspect, uh, you know, introspection, seeing what like isn't working in your life, what you want to create. Um, maybe there's a business opportunity you want to create that you didn't have time to do. Um, you know, people can even sell stuff on Etsy. Like there's so many things that people can do to create extra income um, and to see like what's out of alignment and create a plan. Um, so I don't know. I, that's how I try to look at things. Like, use everything as opportunity even if it's tough um see the good in it and uh like for me i had pneumonia the first eight weeks and i was really really sick i thought i had covid um but i'm never home for that long so i was always doing hair so i was like all right launching the new you school because it's already so i just didn't have time to launch it so i like launched it and now i created a level two and a level three and actually a teacher training so that people can teach the new you school um, so, you know, I used that time that I was home, like, even though I had pneumonia, I was like, I got to distract myself and <laughs> I was just like working. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm glad for that time. So even though, you know, I don't want people to die and, you know, kill themselves and it's, it's terrible, but if people can try to just see it as whatever opportunity, you know, um, presents. Yes. Yeah. I agree. And I feel like there's a lot of people taking it, the opportunity to do that. And then, mm -hmm. um, there are some schools too that are offering. One of my best friends told me she said that she did one of them because um, they were offering free while people were there, uh, free marketing and advertising or something courses. But colleges were offering that. Mm -hmm. So, so um, there was a saying: if you don't come out of this making yourself, you know, it's a, Mm -hmm. I don't want to screw it up. Never mind. Uh, uh, but yeah, I know what you take mean. Time to, uh, yeah, like maybe you could verbalize it for me. <laughs> well, you know, it's an opportunity for all of us, like I said, to look at our lives and, and improve it because we have maybe a little bit more time than we normally do. So than we normally would um, to like create, you know, happiness and healing and prosperity and whatever we whatever we want. And um, you know. It's, it's, if people, I've seen some people that are just, it's just taking them right down, you know, and it's sad. So um, we have, we have the choice, we have the power and, you know, if people need support, reach out, you know, there's healers, there's coaches, um, there's therapists, there's people giving free support, yes. like you said, free advice. Yeah. Um, I know the pranic healer, uh, the masters are giving free healings. Mm -hmm. I read almost every day. Mm -hmm. Each day doing live. So it's, and they're all doing really great meditations. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are giving free stuff. So it's like, you know, we can take advantage of it. Alexa, stop. Sorry. <laughs> My dog's food timer. Alexa, stop. <laughs> what is it? What is it? Alexa, she, um, my dog has a really sensitive stomach, so she has to have her digestive enzymes in her food for like 15 minutes. So that's why I set the timer. I thought you were talking to um, the robot thing. Yeah, yeah, I was. Oh, <laughs> okay. What's your dog's name? Ginny. Oh, okay. I'll show you. She's really cute. Alexa, stop. Alexa, volume one. Come here. Come here. You want food? Come here. Come on. Come on. This is Ginny. Oh, oh, what kind of dog is that? My son. It's a rescue. Um, so she's like 25% Chihuahua, 25% Pomeranian, 25% Finnish Spitz, 25% German Spitz. Look at that. Yeah, I see. Um, yeah, she's a rescue and um, she's a little angel. <laughs> I love that. I feel like it's the best way to take out unhealthy codependency in a healthy way. <laughs> I'm like, I'm single. I'm like, she's my partner, my best friend, my daughter, everything in one. <laughs> I know. Um, I had that with all my friends. You know, I had a funny friend. I had this, blah, 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 all my needs except the physical part was being met. So it was like I was blocking it. But anyway, people listening and please give us questions or Make comments. Tell us you're here. We want to say hi. Yes. Did you, did you share your link too, by the way? Yeah. Okay. I don't see it. Oh, I put it in the private chat. Uh, maybe no, not private. private. Go, go public. Oh, okay. So I guess I have to sign up. So I don't know if I should do that later. 
Oh, okay. So I have to sign up. I didn't know you could. Where's the private? Oh, anyway, sorry, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Fallon Fitzpatrick. Um, so Instagram.com forward slash Fallon Fitzpatrick or just Fallon Fitzpatrick.com. And my spelling is in the comments here. If you're in New York City, if you know anyone in New York City. But so do you want to talk about our workshop? I would love to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about that. Um, so well, I want to hear from you. I know we talked about it. You want to teach pranic healing and um coaching. This while you're out, we give treatments. Mm -hmm. I'll give treatments and talk about it um in the workshop and we'll do a snapshot of before photo and then a definite like fashion shoot photo after at the end of it. So yes, and when we were talking about what dates, like I'll have them down so I can I can uh yeah yeah look it up. All those down. We can put it in the um maybe we can just comment under the video after because yeah. I just can't I don't know where it is right now. <laughs> I have like 10, 500 notes. <laughs> but I know we said October and November, I believe. Yes, yeah. October in New York and November in Florida. Yes. Yeah. Which is perfect. I would love to get out of the cold. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. And hopefully there's no, um, the, the COVID crisis is over so we can all travel. Yes. Oh, God. I know that it's creating a lot of good too. Um, so yeah. And, and I get to see the fall in New York, my favorite time. And I get to see your new shop. Yeah. So excited. Yeah. So, so Everyone will get uh, like a hair makeover. So um, I'm thinking, you know, haircuts, but I'm not opposed to color. I just, it, I think the one in New York will be easier to do like hair color and stuff like that because rather than Florida, because unless I like rent a space at a salon so we can figure that out. But I definitely want to teach everyone how to style their hair, um, what goes with their bone structure and their face shape. Um, if we don't do color, at least what colors go with their skin tones, um, what makeup goes with their features and their skin tone because all that matters. Even like, you know, people that their eyes, like for example, go down a little bit, like you just have to create the wing a little bit going up. So there's just so many things that we can do to balance um, that make a huge difference because the brain like scans someone's face for symmetry unconsciously. So there's so many things we can do. Like if somebody has like a really, um, you know, wide forehead, for example, like a heart shaped face, then we can just create like, you know, some fringe or some angles that cover. So there's so many things we could do and it's subtle, um, but it's just to like improve our natural beauty. And, um, you know, we just like how we feel when we look in the mirror. So uh, mm -hmm. I would love to, you know, create that for people and also do some internal work. Um, yeah, the inside stuff. Is yeah. Good. So I think, you know, Kundalini Yoga I think is so powerful. So I would love to teach a Kundalini Yoga set for transformation. Um, and then also do some coaching because in the new school, a lot of the things that we work on are like listening to yourself, uh, boundaries, sticking up for yourself, but figuring out like what your own needs are, connecting to your inner child, connecting to your future self for guidance. Like it's all about listening to the self because so many people are like, what do you think I should do? What do you think I should do? And like, um, you know, we have to train ourselves to start to listen to ourselves and go after what we want and stick up for ourselves and speak up for ourselves and all of that. So especially people that are in like the spiritual trust community. Yourself. Trust yeah. ourselves and let the soul lead the, this body. You know? Totally. So we'll teach all that in our workshop, right? Or we'll, yeah, yeah. definitely. And Keep also, going. go ahead. No, what you were saying, I love it. I love oh. it. Also, um, you know, I feel a lot of people, especially in the spiritual community, like we can be like too nice, you know, because we want to be kind and we want to help people. But a lot of times we do have to have boundaries and we do have to protect ourselves. So I think that, you know, my my clients are usually people that are like want to heal the world and super kind and super nice. And I'm like, no, you have to be selfish because when you're taken care of, then you can give, you know, and then it's not from an empty cup. So then you'll be able to give more. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that's beautiful. I'm so excited about our Thank workshop. You. Yeah, me too. I'm so excited. Yay! <laughs> so, um, uh, today, also, what and did we want to touch on embracing the dark side? Yeah. 
not even, I don't even love calling things light and dark. It's just, it is what it is. We are both the masculine and the feminine. You know, it's both, it's everything. And when we accept that and we love it and we embrace it and we're grateful for it, boom, your authentic self comes out, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think a lot of times it's just awareness. Like people don't want to admit, you know, if they have like a, a mean thought or an evil thought or an angry thought or like a, I mean, the word evil sounds religious, but you know what I mean? Like a hateful thought um, or when they're like lying to other people. Um, because you know, a lie, a lie. Um, <laughs> what do you say? I wish everyone would tell the truth all the time. Yeah, so I think the first step is to recognize when we're having these thoughts, um, and then just to say, like, okay, got it, you know, because when we try to keep pushing them away and avoiding it, it's never going to, um, you know, go from the unconscious into the conscious to then where we can choose, you know. Even if we have a hateful thought, we could say, okay, this is a hateful thought. Um, probably not healthy for me. Let me send that person some loving energy, like instead or afterwards or whatever, you know? So, but if we just like try to avoid, like, I don't have hateful thoughts, um, we're never gonna, because uh, everyone has some, you know, kind of hateful thoughts. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so if we start to like, you know, recognize that, and then, then we have the power to change. Um, like one of the people in my program, I don't know if she's watching, but yesterday was her second session and cause it's 12 weeks and she was like, yeah, like I realized, you know, when I'm like full of shit <laughs> and um, a lot of people just say things to try to make others happy or uh, please mm -hmm. others in the moment. And they don't even realize that it's not realistic. Like, you know, agreeing to do something for someone or whatever. Um, People are just so used to saying stuff in the moment just to kind of appease people. And it's like, whenever we say something that we know isn't going to happen, then we have to be like catching ourselves. So I think it's all the awareness and we have to kind of accept it um, and stop pushing it away in order to transform that. Yes. Um, I have a friend, Gary King. He, he has a, um, I don't know if he calls it a challenge, but it's like, he dares people to tell the truth for 24 hours. And it's so funny that people don't realize how much mm -hmm. they lie in a day. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh yeah, that's easy for me. I don't mean to divert, but mm -hmm. it's um so when I did the challenge, because I'm like, I always tell the truth, right? <laughs> so I was getting a colon cleanse during this where I was testing myself mm -hmm. and they don't work for me. Mm -hmm. so the secretary's there and you're supposed to do like three in a row or whatever. Mm -hmm. And she's like, can I book your next one? And I, here's where I told my lie. I said, um, no, I don't have my appointment book with me. So I went in my car and I'm like, holy shit. I just told so many lies, unnecessary. The truth is, I'm never going to book another one, ever. They don't work. For mm -hmm. She doesn't care. My appointment book was sitting right next to her head. <laughs> you know, and I was like, oh, my God. I literally sat in my car and cried. And I had a friend with me, and he wouldn't let me go back in and tell her and apologize. I'm like, so it's funny. Like, you don't realize. Mm -hmm. Totally. There's things that are unnecessary and you just being your authentic self and telling the truth all the time. So everyone listening, I dare you to tell the truth for 24 hours, complete, pure truth. I love that. I love that. Yeah. And, yeah, and it's good to be in the inquiry because like you said, people don't even realize. So it's like if we're in the inquiry of like, was that honest, then we start to notice it more. Yeah. Um, I remember my therapist who I love and she totally helped me so much. I, I don't need to see her anymore, but I saw her for like maybe 10 years. And, you know, there was a point where I was so wanted to be truthful about every little thing that I was like, you know, I'm afraid to tell this person the truth because it's going to hurt their feelings or whatever. She was like, you don't have to tell the truth all the time. And I was oh. like, yeah. And I was like, wow, well, I want to, you know? So now I do think it's a balance because 
Um, I am, I, I was super. You can tell it and be nice. There's a way mm -hmm. you can be open heart. As long as you're coming from your open heart mm -hmm. and telling the truth, if they're open to it, you know, but anyway, I didn't mean to interrupt. Okay. Um, so yeah, so now, so I went through like one extreme to the other, right? When I was young, I probably lied all the time. And then I went to like super, super, super honest. And now I kind of just am more self-protective where I don't necessarily have to give a lot of information, but it's not that I'm lying, you know, but I'm just more selective now of like who I'm vulnerable to. So I think that there is a balance and that also comes with boundaries, you know, like we don't have to always divulge everything. Um, and that also is true, you know? Yes. Yeah, exactly. But that's not lying. That's not. Yeah. Like, yeah. I asked you a question. That mm -hmm. was one thing that just oh because I'm a lot like that too and now I'm being more discerning with you because I I'm an open book and I share so much mm -hmm. I've learned to you know especially now more than ever whoever's in my presence I'm very good about like what I put it you know it's being authentic and sharing your energy and not being with energy suckers and people that take, 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 take. Things. Totally. Yeah. I love that you said that because um, a lot of my clients are like people that have been victims of like um, narcissistic abuse and stuff. Uh -huh. So I love that you said that about the energy suckers because, um, you know, that's the one thing is like, we're always, if we have an open heart, we're always so open. That's like, what, one thing I teach is we have to discern like the people that we can be vulnerable with and the people that we can't. And then the people that we can't, it's just boundaries, you know? So um, I love that you said that because a lot of people that are on the spiritual path and empathetic and want to help people, yeah. um, they're, you know, we are like magnets for people that want to, you know, suck our energy um, just because we have so much to give. Yes. So yeah, being discerning and careful. And, you know, I have, and we have, and our time is precious. Mm -hmm. That thing, you know. So we have people that really care and love us. That want it, that would love to be in our presence and spend time with us. And so, yeah. Totally. Yeah. I I remember when I had like friends out of just like habits. Yeah. And when I had to say like, what are these people adding to my life? Like, is it equal? You know? And am I really really happy around them? And now. I just, you know, I'm friends with people that like add to my life and bring me joy and don't criticize me or make me wrong, um, you know, in a manipulative way um, and like take responsibility, like for their impact on people and all that stuff. So I love, um, I love that you're saying that because sometimes we can get sucked into things out of like guilt or habit or, you know what I mean? You've been friends with someone for a million years. Um, so it's scary sometimes to actually look at, you know, the reality of the situation. Uh, but once we do that, then we can also be empowered to make decision, you know, to make choices to hang out with people that are empower us. That's right. Compliment. And you, you share, you give and take, you know, it's, it's, yeah. And people that are encouraging of all your true heart desires, mm -hmm. you know, totally. In, in like, cheerlead you on absolutely so, and I also, what did you say i was gonna say i really want some pom-poms anybody listening <laughs> pom -poms. i need some pom -poms. <laughs> that's awesome i love that <laughs> um i also think you know one of the things i teach is uh we have to believe in ourselves first right um we have to kind of not really care what other people think if we're going to speak our truth and obviously not trying to hurt people, like you said, right. but what I find since everything's energy is the more that we are unattached to people's approval and stuff, the more that we actually get it. So, um, you know, we don't want to hang out with people that put us down, but at the same time, we want to build ourselves up so that we naturally attract other people that build us up. Yeah. I actually have a friend that she's, she says, and, and I love it, being authentic. When The more authentic you are, the more magic happens. Totally. And it's so right on. We were having lunch, and um, I wasn't that hungry. And I ordered, 
in an order. It was like something, the coconut groupers nuggets or something. And uh, I don't know, I bit into one and it was like bony and yucky and I wasn't even that hungry. So I didn't, and it was a lot. It's like a big platter of fried fish. <laughs> so the waitress goes, oh, you didn't like it. I go, no, I ate some of it. It's okay. I just wasn't that hungry and blah, blah, blah. And then she goes, she stepped in and she goes, no, she didn't like it. She bit into one and there's a bone in it. But you know what? I also wasn't hungry. So she stepped in and said it even more. Anyway. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Being authentic and yeah, it's tough. Like when you're not used to it, and then you have that as an intention or a goal, it's really scary. Yeah, yeah. I have people, students in the course uh, in the new school that are like, you know, we'll go over boundaries and a boundary they could set, and then they're like, "Do I have to set this now?" You know, like. <laughs> <laughs> I love your laugh, by the way. Uh -huh. the best laugh. Okay. So wait, give us an example. Of a boundary that someone has trouble doing um, right now. Well, just like setting boundary with family members, you know, because like a lot of our family uh, call us and try to control us or vent, and um, you know, I think that if we're used to letting people doing that forever, it's really scary to stop to tell them that we're not going to deal with it anymore um <laughs> or you would like prefer something else um you know, like, the consequence if they continue you know and it's really scary because as soon as they do it what do they share their experience after they set yeah. the boundary and what yeah. happens after like what is that um uh, so it depends everyone you know i have like 16 students right now um so we're opening up, opening up a new round in September. Um, so some people have like really, really great experiences where they can't even believe the outcome, you know, uh, where the person like totally understands and gets them yeah. and is vulnerable and shares back. And then sometimes people have the um, experience where people are like, yeah, whatever, like kind of blow them off. Like I heard you next topic, like don't say anything. Um, I don't think I've had any. What about yelling? Did anybody get mad at them for it? Um, I'm trying to think. Not right now that comes to mind. Um, but I always warn them that sometimes like the people that are not used to having any type of boundary set will really, really flip out at, at first, you know? Um, yeah. because I feel like when you set a boundary, if you don't really mean it, oh actually I do have one client um that people have gotten mad or upset. Um I don't know if they've like yelled, but um, been like manipulative about it, but if you try to set a boundary, I feel like if you don't mean it, the people will like find any little hole if you don't really mean it or you doubt yourself. So you have to like really, really mean it, but it takes a while to uh, mean it with the yeah. practice. Exactly. If you're not used to it, right? Wow, that's gotta be that's great though. I love that. Oh my god, I love you, Fallon. I'm so blessed to have you in my life and. Uh -huh. I love you too. Thank you. I'm so excited. Thank you. That's great. Um, so we can wrap up here. Mm -hmm. so, um, let's. Any last thoughts? Or any well, since we talked about boundaries, I'll just say like a one, two, and three for takeaways. Um, so if you think of a boundary in your life, viewers, that you want to set, um, anger, frustration, annoyance, sadness are all clues that a boundary has been crossed. So um, I like to teach that, you know, how other people treat us is actually our responsibility because it just means we haven't set a boundary. So um, what I like to say is like the first thing is, you know, communicate this is the boundary that was crossed. Um, the second thing is this is the second time the boundary's been crossed if they do it again. Uh, and I told you about it the first time. So the third time, this is going to be the consequence. That way you let them know ahead of time. And the consequence doesn't have to be punishment, right? It can be just protecting yourself. So um, if somebody's always 30 minutes late, you might say, um, you know, if it happens again, if you're like more than 10 minutes late, um, I'm just not going to be able to make plans with you ahead of time, you know? So 
doesn't have to mean like I'm gonna never talk to you again. But yeah. um, whatever the consequence is to is to try to prevent that situation from happening again, like to protect ourselves. So, um, and then the third time it happens, you say, "It's the third time." I told you the second time, this is what would happen. So moving forward, this is what's going to happen. You know, and like you said, if we can say it with an open heart instead of yelling, um, then people will probably be more likely to uh, hear us. Yeah, that's so beautiful. Thank you for that. Thank so you. Do your boundaries. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> know what your true heart desires, and we will see you. We will see you. Please leave your comments and questions. We'll be back on together um, Wednesday at 11, Eastern Standard. Every Wednesday at 11 o'clock, Eastern yes. Standard. We'll answer your questions then, so thank you. Yeah. So thank you. You have a blessed day. Love you, sister. Thank you, everyone. Love you. Thank you, Bye-bye. <laughs>